Andrea Aschio with I'm Danielle. Apologetic, biblical issues, comparative, and more. And now, the question. Why the absence? What happened? And so many questions about my faith. So to start with, I want to say thank you ever so much for those who encouraged me, those who asked, and thank you for your support and encouragement. And thank you for subscribers again. Please hit the like button, even the dislike as well. That means you have watched it and you express yourself. Uh, that will boost the program, they say, the, those episodes for YouTube. So please do it. Subscribe and encourage others. So share it with others. Let them subscribe. So why the absence? Yes. Uh, start with the equipment failure, gadgets, uh, camera and laptop. At the time, uh, I was not able to buy other new ones. Well, I, I bought a second-hand laptop, which is fine, wonderful, and the same with other equipments that I'm able to, to manage with a little support. The work is an individual. It springs from my love to God and my love to the viewers. Passing more than half a century of Christian faith and ministry. I believe I have a message to share and I would love to share it. And they ask you, you will meet the revolutionary, the rebel youth. Yes, I was in that stage. I passed that stage. Uh, che Guevara was my hero, plus other heroes from the Arab and uh, world, uh, etc. Uh, you will meet an uh, old man that doesn't confess the age as such. It means I'm more choleric. I'm, as long as I'm able to do something, I do it. And I keep working by God's grace, coming to the 80th of my age. But I keep working out of love, love to God and love to people always my desire to encourage as many as possible. Uh, you will meet the uh, artist. Yes, I have studied art. I studied uh, painting, uh, sculpturing. I participated in exhibitions in Syria and uh, Lebanon and one in Cyprus. That's years back. And I still delight with an expressive hymn, good music, and comprehensive biblical studies. Anything in the Bible could catch my attention, uh, drive me to search and search it thoroughly by God's grace. And in that way, I will be able to help by God's grace as well when it is needed. I trust that God the Holy Spirit will take some of the things and channel them to others as the needs occur. Now about myself. Obviously coming to Christ from Islam, I won't say Muslim background, from Muslim foreground, that was a cause of so many hardship and difficulties. I won't say typical. Today we don't suffer as much as in those early days, but suffering is suffering, yet the Lord is there. I remember those early days in Beirut where I, I used to go out to the streets and cry and weep. And one thing I would tell the Lord, I used to tell the Lord, thank you, say thank you. Because you have said it, in the world you have tribulation. You have trouble and sufferings. Mm. And I used to tell the Lord at the time, 
If you haven't said it, I will be disappointed. I will be discouraged. But I have not been cheated. My Christian faith, when since I embraced it, was not a promise of rosy path, but a path of suffering and hardship. And by God's grace I have been through. And still, whatever may come, I trust the Lord will take me through it. Till that day, when he will wipe every tear from our eyes, from my eyes, and death will be no more. Hallelujah. That is wonderful. So that verse from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verse 33, was an encouraging to me. As the Lord said, in the world you will have tribulation. But take cheer. Rejoice, because I have overcome the world. I conquered the world, and I used to say in my prayer and weeping, Thank you, Lord, because you conquered the world, and you I am a conqueror. Hallelujah for that. Only by his grace, only through Jesus Christ, I am a conqueror. I do not complain that much. I learned from my, by example, even my mom was a good example of satisfaction, contentment. So I'm more content, I'm more satisfied in life with a little thing than any other people. And I thank God for that. I thank God for the example of my dear mom who would hardly hear her complaining and not demanding even. I remember when I used to go to Damascus and uh, stay with her, I would ask, Mom, what would you like us to have today? She would reply, typically, what is on your heart, son? What do you like, son? Even as a Christian, her treatment to me and her example was tremendous. I could share more about her faith later. It will come in, in its timing. But those early days were forming me into a solid Christian based on the Word of God. That is the thing that sustains me and the work of the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for some Christians who were of encouragement. Sadly, not everybody. But I thank God for the human factor. I believe in the sovereignty of God. He knows everything. And because He knows, He provides. And life will not be always like that. Here it is temporary, but life will continue with the Lord forever and ever and ever. That gets me excited. At times, like a couple of weeks back, I drove in a couple of days like uh, 2,300 kilometers and I don't have a tape recorder or a CD or a radio in the car. It's a poor car, but very good, working fine. Yet, I'm able to sing. I rejoice in the Lord. I'm excited about Jesus being with me on the road. Mm -hmm. As I drive, that not be easy physically for someone near the 80 of life. But being workaholic in God's work, there is no way to stop. People say slow down. Yes, maybe I'm slowing down, but uh, gradually. 
only the physic will be the limitation. Otherwise, God is good. And the reason for this, another reason, biblical reason for the, the title they ask you is a well-known verse, uh, 1 Peter 3.15. Set Christ apart as Lord in your hearts and always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you possess. Yet, that's important, yet, do it with courtesy and respect. So here we have an order to be ready all the time to give an answer to anyone who asks about the reason of the hope we have in Christ. Brothers and sisters, we must be ready always to give an answer to those who ask what do we have? Why we have it? Why we rejoice like that? Why don't I don't complain? And why and why and why? So many questions. The answer is Jesus. The answer is God's word. The answer is the work of his Holy Spirit, me. Who would support my weaknesses in Christ. So, asking you, asking me, take us to this verse in the epistle of St. Peter, the first one. And we have to do it, give an answer. How? With courtesy and respect. With courtesy and respect. So it's not only giving an answer. Try to give satisfying answer. My dear friend Aziz has a, a question for every answer, which is wonderful. But try to give a satisfying answer with courtesy and respect. Yes, I do respect the men. I don't have respect to some teachings in other religions at all, but I have respect to the adherence, to the people, whatever religion they have. They are my friends, my brothers and sisters in humanity. So this verse is one of the triggers as well for such title, ask you or asking you or asking me these questions. I will try to answer in the coming uh, episodes. So that will bring me to near the conclusion. They ask you, is your program? I would like to hear from you. I would like to hear your questions, your objections. And if you want to write me an email, write an email that will uh, take my attention more to give a reply to whatever question you have on your heart. I will try by God's grace to answer. Base it on the Bible, on God's word, and logic when possible, seeking the direction of God's Holy Spirit to give me the right reply to the right questions, even if you will still have questions for my answers that will be welcome. I will not be politically correct. To me, God's word is God's word. It is the master word. So forget about political correctness when it comes to sincerity. With all respect to my viewers, to my friends, out of respect, I will be sincere with you to give you the right answer from God's word, what I believe, without sugaring, sugar coat it. There is possibility that once a month, depend on the viewers, we will have a direct program, maybe on the air directly or recorded, that will be decided 
with few others, especially in Arabic, in the Arabic uh, world, those who would like to have uh, some direct questions answered uh, on the air. So I will be happy to do that. In all this, I will listen to your suggestion. I value your contributions and fellowship. And yes, I will need to learn more about the technology I'm, I'm using as an individual. But I want to thank you for your partnership with me. May the Lord bless you richly. Shall we approach God's holy throne in prayer? Father God, I want to thank you and praise you in the precious name of Jesus. I want to thank you for the technology that will enable us to spread the word, to share with one another, to convey a message across thousands of miles and kilometers. We are grateful that we can fellowship with one another face to face in many parts of the world. In some areas, Lord, People cannot meet. Christians cannot meet together in person. So we pray for those who are suffering persecution for their faith in Christ. I pray for the situation in Nigeria, in Kano, in northern Nigeria. The difficulties, the hardship, the persecution the church is facing. Father God, I do commit this work to you and I commit my friends, my listeners, viewers, brothers and sisters. Bless each one in the precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord. To him with the Holy Spirit we give you thanks and glory forever and ever. Amen.